Hi, my name is Mary. Welcome to my Scoot Farm. Today we're reading Blizzard and afterwards stick around because we're going to make Blizzard cookies. One day when I was a young boy, nearly four feet of snow fell from the sky. This is my story. Blizzard by John Rocco. The first flake fell right before recess. It was followed by many, many more. The wind whipped up and school closed early. By the time my sister and I got home, the snow was already over our boots. The snow continued to fall through the night, and I thought it would never stop. The next morning, the snow drifts were so high, we couldn't open our front door. So we went out the window instead. When we went back inside, we were cold, wet, and tired. We made camp by the wood stove and our feet tingled as we sipped hot cocoa made with milk. On the third day, Dad shoveled the driveway so he could get the car out when the snow plows came. We dug tunnels and secret rooms under the snow. An igloo can keep you warm in sub-zero temperatures. What's an igloo? By day four, the plows still hadn't come. I wondered if we'd ever see grass again. Inside, things got tense as our food started to run out. I knew we wouldn't survive much longer on cocoa made with water. We need to get to the store, but the roads aren't plowed and we certainly can't walk through this. Friday, on day five, I realized it was up to me to take action. I was the only one who had memorized the survival guide. I was the only one who knew what equipment was required. I was the only one light enough to walk on top of the snow. On day six, I made a list. Milk, bread, eggs, candy bar. I prepared the sled. Then I set off. My usual landmarks were covered by snow drifts. One neighbor says candles. This one says cat food. I managed to check in with my neighbors along my journey. And here's the map where I checked in with the neighbors. Helped build a snowman. Went the wrong way. Climbed to a lookout. This, this neighbor says coffee. This one says peanut butter. Made a snow angel. Explored an igloo. Joined a snowball fight. <gasps> I made it! Last, I reached the store. I was tired, hungry, and chilled to the bone, but I couldn't think about myself. I was on a mission. Are you going to carry this all by yourself? Yes, sir, I've got my sled. And this person is on the phone saying, yes, he's on his way back now. On the return trip, I raced to drop off the groceries before the sun went down. Wow. Grateful smiles and cheers gave me the energy I needed to make it back home. That night we all had hot cocoa made with milk and it had never tasted better. But there was something else we still needed. Snow plows! It looked as if we would 
would see civilization again after all. Guess we'll have to go back to school tomorrow. Ooh, thank heaven I was going stir crazy. We had survived the blizzard. The end. Hi, welcome to Muskoot Farm. We're in the kitchen today making some blizzard cookies. Let's get started. In a large mixing bowl, we're going to add four ounces of room temperature cream cheese. Being room temperature is very important. Um, as well as two sticks or one cup of butter, also at room temperature. Now you can do this all with an electric mixer, um, like a KitchenAid with this attachment. Um, if you have the other kind of mixer with these, I think it might be a little tough because this dough is very thick, but it's up to you. But at Muskoot Farm, we do things by hand. We're a little old fashioned. So um, when we do this step of cookie making, um, I just use the back of a very sturdy wooden spoon. So we're going to mix together, combine the butter and cream cheese. The butter and cream cheese are combined. Now we're going to add one cup of white granulated sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. And this step in cookie making is called creaming. Cream together with butter and sugar. And again, I'm using the back of a spoon. It works just fine. The point is to get this mixture light and fluffy. So we'll do this for a couple of minutes. So our mixture is a little bit fluffier now. I scraped down the sides with a spatula here. And next, we're going to add one egg. Mix that together. Now I'll add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and mix well. Now in a separate bowl, we're going to whisk together three and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon cornstarch, one teaspoon baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Those are our dry ingredients and it's best to combine them separately from the wet ingredients first so that your leavening agents like baking soda can kind of distribute evenly. And now that I've whisked it, we will slowly add, bit by bit, the dry ingredients to our butter and sugar mixture. So just do about a half a cup at a time and mix in between. All right, so we've completely combined all of that flour mixture with our butter and sugar. It was a lot of work, but things like this are worth it, you know? Now we're going to add one and a half cups of white chocolate chips to our blizzard cookie dough. Mix this as best you can. Again, I've been using the back of the spoon this whole time. I just find that it really helps with the thick cookie dough. Now, because these are blizzard cookies, we found some really cool winter sprinkles. We're going to add a quarter of a cup. Mix together. Any sprinkles you have on hand will work fine. Now, once this is mixed, We'll put it in the fridge for 30 minutes to chill. All right, so our cookie dough was chilling, covered in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. That's an important step because if you don't, uh, the butter will melt really fast when you put it in the oven and your cookies won't cook properly. I have a spoon for scooping the dough. I have cookie sheets lined with parchment paper and we have our oven preheated to 350. So, you start by scooping a little piece of cookie dough and rolling it into a ball about one and a half inches. Place it on your sheet and then gently press down. We'll fill up our cookie sheet and check back in. 
Okay, I think we're all ready. This made about 48 cookies. Um, they're going to go in the oven for eight to 10 minutes. Okay, our cookies came out of the oven after about nine minutes. We let them cool and now they are completely cooling on wire racks. So, um, we hope that you enjoyed making these cookies. Ooh, blizzard. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time.